I tell you what, the Holy Spirit is so amazing. Uh. Is, is this going to do it, guys? Yeah? 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 We're good. Okay. Lori, I'll give you this one. I want to talk to you briefly about the river of God and then um, we're going to switch over to prayer. You know, it was mentioned earlier that we did nightly meetings for 12 years, or at least six nights a week for 12 years. And you wonder how is that possible, but I'll tell you how. It's because every night we would worship, we would share testimonies, and we would share the word, and then at the end of the night we would transition into a ministry time, and we would stack up all the chairs and um, ask people to line up, and our ministry team would come along and pray for them, and people would get zapped by the Holy Spirit, they would get wonderfully touched, and their life would be changed, and they would go home and tell their friends. And they, they would say, you got to get there because God's moving and He's changing lives. And so people would start coming, and they kept coming, and as long as we had fresh wood for the fire, the meetings kept going. And every night for those 12 years, one-third of the, of the meeting were, were there for the first time. Every, every night, one-third were new. So how is that possible? Because God was touching people and it was so wonderful, they told their friends. So the whole thing was testimony driven. Now how many of you had a, have had a really good touch this week? Let's see. And you know, in the smaller venue, like David kept pointing out, it was easier because we could get at the people. They got lots and lots of ministry over on the other side. But here, because of the numbers, it's been difficult. So here what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the river. And at the end, you're going to come unto him and drink and invite the river to flow in you. And then our ministry team, with the help of some catchers, are going to come along and pray for you individually if you would like. If you don't like, then you don't have to have it. But I would strongly suggest that you get prayer for this so that that contagious Holy Spirit will flow into you again and again and again. So what it's going to look like is at the end, we're going to stack up all the chairs in a stack of 10, move them out of the way. I need everybody to help me with that, so let's quickly. And then I want you to line up in rows about 10 feet apart, uh, three meters would be good, right? And you can use those columns as a sort of a line of sight for the first row there and then another one 10 feet in front, another one 10 feet in front and then behind and so forth. How many think you could manage that? Oh, about 10% of you think you could manage it. How many want prayer at the end? All right. So that's what we, that's what we want to do. By the way, this guy here, um, he, he says he's stuck to the floor and he doesn't think he can move. So he can move one hand at a time, but he's just out. And then, and the pain in his neck is almost completely gone, isn't it? So he says, still a little tinge there, but there we are. Well, listen, let's go to the, to the scripture here, to Psalm uh, Psalm chapter 1, verse 3. And I want to talk about the river of God very briefly. And by the way, you guys on the sound desk, if you want to start taking down some of the stuff, because I realize we're on a tight turnaround here with the sound, so you feel free to come up and clear the platform or whatever you can do without cutting me off uh, totally. That would be awesome, all right? He, let me read this, Psalm 1, 
Blessed is the man or the one who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly or stands in the path of sinners or sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. There's a tremendous promise for those of us who purpose in our heart that we're going to get closer to the Lord. There's the symbolism all through Scripture about the presence of the Lord is like a river, and it's like a river of living water. And so in the psalm here, and just to save time, it's Psalm 1 there, those, those first uh, three verses. Then Psalm 46, there's this scripture that says, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. There is a flowing, moving presence of the Holy Spirit that comes and gladdens the heart even corporately for the whole group that's in this room right now for the whole body of Christ. There is a river. Tell your friend, there is a river. <laughs> Psalm 105 verse 41 summarizes the story of what happened with Moses. And it says this, he opened the rock and water gushed out. It was in dry places like a river. And that's talking about the story where Israel was without water for many days in the desert and they cried out and the Lord told Moses, take the staff in your hand and go and strike the rock and as you do, water will come pouring out of that rock to water the people, a million and a half or whatever, and all of their animals. And so Moses went and he took his rod and struck the rock. The rod was a type of the cross. The rock was a type of Christ. And as he was struck with the cross, living water gushed out. And Moses said it, it was like a river. And David writing about it said it was like a river that flowed into all the parched places. Now Jesus in John chapter 7 said this, if anyone is thirsty, meaning, hey, you don't have to have this. You can carry on the way you are and, and just go through life miserable. <laughs> you don't have to have this. But if anyone is thirsty, are you thirsty? Then come unto me and drink. And then out of their innermost being, out of their belly, there will flow rivers of living water. And it goes on to say this. He spoke about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Now, there's many uh, symbolic descriptions of the Holy Spirit, and I love them all. He's like a wind. He's like the breath of God. He's like the rain that comes down. He, he's like a fire that burns. And he's like a river, like we're talking about. And see, there's all these wonderful analogies. But when, when we're in a group like this, you feel his presence many times coming upon you. Like that guy shaking like he did when we prayed for him. That was the river of God coming upon him. He, he wasn't just doing that. That was an external, powerful presence that came upon him that shook that pain right out of him. The guy was a nine, come on. Nine out of ten, suffering. And he got touched by the river of God. So, if anyone is thirsty. Now, I want to finish with Ezekiel 47 because... That's where I believe all of this is soon going. How many are excited about revival coming to the UK? <laughs> Ezekiel 47.1, then he brought me back to the door of the temple and there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple toward the east 
for the front of the temple faced east, and the water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. And he brought me out by way of the north gate, led me around on the outside of the outer gateway that faces east, and there was water running out on the right side. And when the man went out to the east with a line, a measuring line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits, and he brought me through the waters, and the waters came up to my ankles. Now, this is a description of living water that grows and becomes more and more and more. It's how revival works. It's supposed to increase. And so he says, again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the water, and the water came up to my knees. Just lay hands on your knees and say up to here. Again, he measured 1,000 cubits and brought me through, and the water came up to my waist. Oh, my goodness. I want you to just imagine that you're walking into the river of God, into the Holy Spirit. You feel it on your feet, and oh, my goodness, when it's up to your feet, you can play in it. You know, you just splash around, and it's nice and pleasant. You get cool and really have fun, especially in a dry country. But now as you get up to your knees, all of a sudden, you're, you're getting, you know, a little deeper. This is, it's, it, you're transitioning from you having the river to the river having you. It's up to your knees. Now by the time you get up to your waist, woo, wow, this is current going here. I mean, now you're starting to really feel it. And then he measured out another thousand cubits and Ezekiel describes what's happening to him, and he says, it was a river that I could not cross, for the water was too deep, water in which one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. Then he said to me, son of man, have you seen this? And he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river, and when I returned there along the bank, there were very many trees on one side and on the other. And he said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the valley and enters the sea. That is the Dead Sea. And when it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. And it shall be, I love this part, it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the rivers go, will live. Wherever the rivers go. I want you to do whatever you need to do to get in the river and stay in the river. Carol talked about her timer. I tell you what, this helped her so much. She's a godly woman. She loves the anointing. She's in the river all of the time. And yet the busyness of life takes you out. And God bless Dr. Elson from Hamburg, Germany, he told her about these timers. So we went and had a bunch made up, Stu and Chloe and others. And so now we have catch the fire timers. Who would like this, by the way? If I throw it, I don't want to hit somebody in the head, but there you go. You can set that thing and it will remind you to get in the river every 10 minutes. And it's simple to set up, you know, it's not a big thing. But I want you to think about this. Everywhere the river flows, there's life. Now, will you tell your friend that? Everywhere the river flows, stuff lives. You know, it seems like a simple thing. But it took me a while to really uh, get this and understand it. Because somehow you think it's the words you say or it's, it's the way you say them. You know, you, you can say, be healed. Or you can say, be healed or something. And so you, you kind of think, well, maybe I need more bravado in the way that I'm praying or whatever. You know, it's not so much the way you pray. It's, it's who touches people when you pray. And it took me a while to understand. Miracles happen because the Holy Spirit touches people. 
Miracles happen because the river flows into them. Now, the Lord is describing how his presence flows from his throne, and as you and I get in, say get in, he can take you deeper and deeper and deeper, and as you go deeper, here's what happens. There's a trend. At first, you have him. You have the river. Oh, isn't this wonderful? Have the anointing. Splash, splash. We're up to our ankles. Isn't this great? We're cooling off. We feel refreshed. Oh, we love it in here. And the Lord's saying, hey, come on a little deeper. And so you go on up to your knees now. Whoa, this is, there's a current here. I'm, I don't want a bit swept off my feet or whatever, but, but, you know, you're starting to get into it now. It's touching your knees. That could mean a lot of things, especially a prayer life. And then you go a little deeper. Now it's up to your waist. What does that mean? Wow, you're transitioning pretty soon. They're, 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 it's touching all of you waist down. I think you're going to start being fruitful and multiply as all that gets going. But then it goes another thousand cupids until finally you, you can't, you don't have the river anymore. The river has you. Now, there's a lot of people set limits on this thing. Say, well, I'm okay ankle deep, but I'm not going any deeper because I'm afraid to lose control. And control, honestly, over the years, we, we found that this was the biggest hindrance both to ourselves and to the people we were ministering to because it's kind of like a fear of the unknown, you know? What if I get in that river and I'm over my head? What then? I want to ask you this. Is God ever out of control? Let me give you an example. Normally when, when we, Carol and I go somewhere, I drive the car. I don't know why that is. I just get behind the wheel, come on, get in, take my car, and off we go together. But every now and then, for whatever reason, because I need to finish my message or I need to, you know, doze off or whatever, I'll ask, honey, will you drive? Now, when Carol drives, that's different than when I drive. I'm not in control now. And I'm telling you, it's not the same feeling. I'm like, baby, slow down. There's a stoplight there. So me tell her, come watch that guy, you know, because... And she'd say, just stop it or something. Now, the truth is, she has never had a ticket in all of her driving history for over 50 years of any kind. She came close once or twice, but the guy let her off. So, you know, she's never had one. Whereas, I can't say that. <laughs> I really can't, you know. Um, yeah. Last year, like our Thanksgiving Day is, is, in, is in October, somewhere around October the 10th or something like that. I was speaking in our church, and we were late, and so we were trying to get, get there on time. And you know what? There was a policeman who jumped out in front of us who could not wait to meet me. He flagged us all down and everything else, and I'm like, oh, no. Oh, God, I am so sorry. I should have known better. I know that they hide right there, you know, <laughs> waiting for somebody to come along unsuspecting. And so, okay, he pulled us over. And Carol said something, I'm like, well, he's preaching in our church this morning, and we were a little late, and so we're so sorry, and da-da-da-da-da. And the guy's like, yeah, yeah. Off he goes. Well, then he came running back and he said, I'll let you go this time. Have a nice day. Just like that. I was like, well, hallelujah. I mean, I told the story in our church about this is a day to be thankful for a lot of things in it. But Carol's never had a ticket. So you would think that I would be very secure when she's driving the car, wouldn't you? What's the issue? I'm not in control. She's in control. But let me ask you this. Is the car out of control? No. It's just that someone else is driving. Now, when you start going into the river of God, listen to me, the deeper you go, 
the less you're in control until finally you get waters to swim in. Now then at that point, you don't have the river, the river has you. But I want to say this, please don't be put off by that. That is the way it's supposed to be because you're not in control anymore. God's in control of you. Now then, if the Lord's in control of you, are you safe or not? A lot of people are really afraid of this part because they think, well, what if the devil gives me a counterfeit and all that kind of stuff? Listen, don't have faith for the counterfeit. Please. So many people have got a great big devil, a little wee God. The devil can do this, that, or the other. No, go get yourself a bigger God. I've been saying that for 18 and a half years now. You need to go and get a bigger God who is able to keep you and deliver you from all your troubles, all right? So when you come to the river, you're not coming like stupidly, you're coming in faith. And you're saying, God, I am asking my father for bread and I know that he will not give me a stone. Now listen, you just sowed into revival here. We, we want to see revival spread all over this nation. Don't we? Let me ask you this. If we come back next year with, a, with a, another team and do another event, how many of you will come back? That looks like about a third of you. Because <laughs> we, you, we need to keep hitting this thing again and again and again so we don't lose momentum. But it's the river, it's the presence of the Holy Spirit that is absolutely the secret. When he moves on hearts and lives, I'm telling you, people change. And when hearts get changed, that's what we call revival, and it's one person at a time, one soul at a time. Now, I'm going to quit now, but listen to me. If anyone is thirsty, what do you do? Jesus said, come unto me. Don't come to John or Carol or David or Randy or Dan or people. Don't, don't, you know, people, people will pray for you, but it's the Lord you're going to. And so in many, in many, it doesn't matter who prays for you. When you come to the Lord in faith and you're starting to go deeper into that river, I'm telling you, he will meet you. And when he touches you, there's a transformation that happens. Now, you don't have to do this, but if you would like prayer for our team to lay hands on you, I want you to... Help us stack up the chairs. You need to do this so that your purses and Bibles and jackets and everything are, are secure. And I'm going to need uh, about 50 guys to help us with catching. I'm going to ask the ministry team to come on up to the front. Chris, how many do we have on the team, Chris? Chris. 